Okay, hi guys, and welcome to this review of the The Audio Legacy 5 Hybrid in ear monitors. Um, this uh, The Audio, for those of you that don't know, is the in house brand of Linsoul.com. Linsoul is one of the leading factors of why Chi Fi has become such a, a big, big uh, player in recent years. You know, brands that we've never heard of LZ, The Audio, Fearless Audio, and so on. They've all became very prominent in the market because of Linsoul's involvement. Linsoul have a very very different policy and a different approach to having the earphones that they carry. Um, I, I've worked with Linsoul, I do work with Linsoul, um, they provide the earphones for the review, I do a review. Um, but there has never been, uh, unlike many other companies, there has never been a hint of saying you can't say this, you need to say this. Um, there's absolutely nothing. Um, what they seem to do is they seem to take feedback very well. So if you say, I don't like the cable on this, then they go away and they change the cable and two months later they release an earphone with something like this, the, the Monarch with, Jesus, this cable is bloody incredible. Um, they, they get criticism for some aspects of the sound, they go away, retune it. And that doesn't extend just to their The Audio brand. I mean, this this extends to other companies that they have influence over where they seem to act as a, a sort of middle ground between the buyer and uh, the companies producing the, the earphones. Uh, for example, I believe some, some reviewers of some people have had input into Fearless Audio's products. Um, I know that there's some input that they put into KZ products, into some of the DAPs, and you know they, they take the feedback and they relay it to the companies, and the companies make the corrections based on what the you know the buyer's wanting. And I think that's a fantastic way to do business because, from what I gather, Linsoul are they want to have the best stock possible of earphones. They want to have you know, they want you to tell them it's bad, so they stop stocking it. They they produce, uh, they will have a, a store full of excellent products that you really have no reason to criticize at their respective price points. And I think that's the big thing where a lot of these brands have became so important is the, the Western earphone market has become so stagnant. Um, Sure, Sennheiser, uh, Westland, they hold on to their models, don't take advantage of any of these electrostatic drivers, ceramic drivers, hybrid technologies, um, you know, the planar magnetic drivers and earphones. Uh, you find that a lot of these companies where somebody like Sure leads the way with electrostatics originally, into an earphone, it wasn't really attainable for people, so they, they do a real service of bringing the bleeding edge technology into regular consumers' hands. And what you have is when you look at you know something like the Westone 30, there's an earphone from China, half the price, that is going to outperform it. Uh, and that that's that's right through now at every price point from whether it's twenty dollars all the way up to over a thousand dollars. So you have this this dilemma where Western brands are getting their asses kicked um, because of brands like The Audio and others. So anyway, rant over. Uh, we're going to go into the The Audio Legacy Five Five Driver Hybrid. Um, We'll go over build quality first, packaging, accessories, and so on. So, packaging, kind of basic little box, shitty paper on the outside. Um, nice presentation, but nothing really important. I think you have this full leather, kind of cheap, but you know, it's semi rigid carry case, and a few different sets of. Uh, ear tips, you get some foam and silicon options in here. 
Um, so accessories definitely not a reason to go and buy the earphones, but yeah, it's thought out. It looks good. The cable is it's okay, but I mean it's good. It, it's, it is really good in comparison with where we are. But where we are going now with the current lineup, you know, as I say, the, the Monarch headphone. Oh. That is a that is a good cable, um, you know it's nice, it's compliant, it doesn't hold memory too much. It's got excellent hardware, uh, metal jack point, 3.5 mil, uh, good strain relief. Another metal um, splitter there, and even a metal uh, slider uh, or cable cinch. It's a good cable. It's just that the cables are getting so good now um, that. You know, the cables that Linsel are putting out, or the companies that Linsel are sourcing from, are producing fantastic cables now. Ones that would have cost hundreds of dollars years ago. Uh, let's have a look at the earphones themselves. You have this resin or acrylic housing, two pin connector, not my favourite, I prefer MCX. Um, but apart from that, you have a little vent port there for the dynamic driver on top. And yeah, it's just your basic universal monitor earphone. Um, this sits between the Tragus and Anti-Tragus, locks it in place with the cable going over the top. Uh, you find there's very little movement, zero microphonics coming into the earphone. Um, the only gripe that I have about this is the um, this nozzle here. Um, you can see that there's no lip, which means that if I take an ear, tip put it on it's just it's super super easy especially when you know you're sweating or something or you you get moisture in your ears uh, for the the silicon tips to slide off when you're removing them from your ear as a medium fit it's good comfort decent isolation uh, sound wise sound is very good um it is kind of strange and not what i'd expected coming from something like the monarch which has excellent highs. This has a very, very slight, like low end boost going into the mids, but very, very, very slight. It's almost completely neutral. Um, and then it sort of rolls off from there, like straight through the, the upper mid range is very flat. Uh, and the, the, the treble is, you know, very declined actually. It sits recessed. It seems, when you're listening, it seems like it's recessed from the mid range. Um, there's not a lot of sparkle, therefore there's not a lot of sound stage to it. It's, it sounds like a very in-your-head experience. But it's got excellent detail. The bass is punchy, it's tight, it's articulate. Uh, overall, it's a very good sounding earphone. But it's not what I would consider as... Following in the tradition of these Chi-Fi earphones that punch above their weight. Uh, for, I think... 50 to 100 dollars more you get something like the LZ A7 which the these these kick ass these are worth multiples of you know the price uh, the price point that they sell at I think between 300 and 350 depending if you catch them on sale um they punch well above their weight these sit about their weight um when I say about their weight that is in relation to Western brands, um, like if you look at it as this versus the equivalent priced Sure or the equivalent priced Western, or even the Sennheiser IEATS, I'm going to take these. Um, I don't think they're going to be much of an upgrade over them, but they're going to be about there for the same money. Um, actually, probably a little bit, a little bit better. Um, but it's when you look at them in comparison to other Chi-Fi earphones, you have, you know, th there's two earphones that I really, really like, the Tin Hi-Fi P1 and the Shure Tape. I believe there's a, a new version of the tape that's just came out, but if we take those two earphones, there's a lot of controversy about them, but I, I genuinely think the, T1, uh, the P1 are fantastic sounding earphones. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of them. I think they, they are worth multiples of the price. Um, 
I think they're actually better than the new P2. Um, the those two earphones, the tape and the P1, they they're about the hundred to hundred and fifty dollar range, and they, you know, they're worth to me in my eyes multiple times um, the actual price of the earphones on sound performance. Debatable about build quality, styling of the P1 tape. They're they're a bit funny looking earphones. Um, but definitely in sound, I feel that they punch upwards to three, four, five hundred dollars. In some cases, like more, because it's, it's it's hard to say. You can get a garbage set of eight, nine hundred dollar earphones, um, that the P1 is going to outperform. But then again, you get some really good what six, seven hundred dollar earphones that punch above a thousand dollars in comparison to companies like Noble and other stuff. Um, these. Feel like they're worth about the money, but when you're considering you could have a tin P1 or Sure Tape for half the money, and arguably you're getting better sound quality from those ones. Okay, you're losing the you're losing the cable, you're losing the the, the beautiful designed um, housing. Um, it's really about what's important to you. Um, I think they're a good earphone. I do recommend them for the price, but as you get into the higher, you start spending more money, even just a little bit more money, I think you're getting more sort of bang for buck ratio. Uh, very little to complain about. Smooth, easy listening. Very, very inoffensive if you are, you don't get on well with uh, treble, you're treble sensitive. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a good step forward. They're trying different things and they are listening. You know, I'm going to give them my feedback on that. Um, and I'm sure they're going to adapt it. And, you know, we'll see what they bring out in the future. But they've, they've already proven that they can produce fantastic earphones um, at almost every price range now. So that's the The Audio Legacy 5. Again, I'm sorry, I'm rambling like crazy. I'm trying to keep these reviews under 10 minutes because I really don't think that you should be listening to them for 20, 30 minutes, but um, I promise I will get better just starting doing this. If you do like the video for some reason, subscribe or like, I don't know. Uh, I'm not very good at this. Um, if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them down below. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll get on to another review.